Hi, I'm gonna talk to you guys because I don't think I have the capacity to talk to people who can respond or ask questions right now. And you know what's funny, it's like this is like the prime time for like needing to be with someone, but you can't be. So, um, yeah. I am currently leaving the hospital's parking lot because I just dropped off my husband at the ER for possible complications that are possibly due to COVID-19. We took him, I think it was yesterday, to go get tested because it was getting to the point where this is really sus. He's been having uh, problems since Tuesday. Today is Saturday. It is 8.16 according to my car clock. I think it was Tuesday. He had a fever that was... Where am I? He had a fever that clocked at least it was 99.9 .9 when I I did when I when I when I tested him or whatever uh, had him take it and not long after that he probably a few hours after that he took it again and it was over a hundred um, so you know we did what we could with ibuprofen obviously keeping him warm because he was having like shivery chills and everything um, he'd been having like congestion like symptoms and back pain then he i don't even i don't even know but basically he had a lot of ibuprofen he said his back was hurting kind of like where his kidneys were i was kind of concerned about that he was concerned about that um, he seemed to be getting better at night. It would get wor it got worse, um, and then um, it got to the point where we got him tested. Of course, we haven't gotten his test back, so we don't know for sure. At this point, I'm pretty confident in saying probably, because uh, we found out that he was around somebody who also has a suspected case. They have the whole like loss of taste and loss of smell. He said that he has a harder time smelling things. Like it has to be right up in his face, but he didn't like totally lose it. So I don't know if that even counts. I don't know the rules. I don't know how this works. Um, so today, um, he was really bad. He threw up, I think, last night. And then he threw up today. Um, and he was, like, really shaking and stuff. He gets shaky sometimes because he has kind of like a, I want to say neuropathy, maybe. So sometimes he shakes anyway, right? Um, God, words. Yeah, so this morning not great um turns out he's uh throwing up has sent me to the uh, store to get him stuff because obviously he can't really eat but certain things so i get him all all the stuff uh come home he is not well um he gets a little bit better um he looks a little better when he eats like crackers and i he, Gatorade and Sprite and all that jazz. Today, I think, started being mostly concerned about 5 o'clock because he was shivering real bad um, and he felt really cold. The house was at 71, which we've been kind of running it cool this whole, like, this whole time really, this summer especially and everything. I turned off the air conditioning and everything. Thing. Usually 9 o'clock is about the time he starts getting kind of like sweaty and stuff from his ibuprofen because the ibuprofen was helping him, you know, not have a fever and it would cause him to sweat a lot. Today it was like like four hours earlier than normal for him to start feeling like that. He was under three blankets and the house temperature probably around, I don't know, I want to say like it finally hit like 73-ish and he still was cold under three blankets and his arms and hands had like a bit of bluish tint to it which is called cyanosis. The peripheral cyanosis isn't necessarily a bad thing it just means you're cold. That means your arms, your legs, especially like in your fingertips and your hands which I had noticed they were kind of pale earlier and then we were watching for the whole blue lips thing because that's what you know that's one of those signs that if you have you need to go. Then he was starting to have more trouble breathing. He said his chest was feeling heavy and like he was like not hardly moving a lot so at that point I couldn't tell if his lips were looking a little more purple or not I don't know if it was in my imagination or not but at this point he was starting to feel comfortable enough uh, with it being an emergency to basically tell me like 
um, that I needed to know how to get into different accounts that we have. So that freaked me out a lot. Um, I told him that he doesn't need to worry about that because he's not going anywhere. Um, like, you know, off the planet or something. And then I called ahead and they were basically like, you won't be able to come in because you suspect he has COVID. Um, because we haven't had tests back, we don't know for sure. I sat and waited for probably at least 30 minutes to hear back from him. And then he finally said he thinks I can go because they're talking about a hospital gown. So I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening. I just need to talk to somebody, so. What's also scary is that my lungs hurt a little bit when I breathe deep, but I have asthma, so that's not abnormal. Hi, hello, I am back. Guess what? I just came back from the hospital. Today is Wednesday, August, I don't freaking know, probably the 3rd, 4th, 5th, somewhere around there. I don't know what day it is anymore half the time. All I know is it has been a week and a day since Justin first had a fever. I'm just angry. Like, I'm just angry. And like, I don't, I don't know what to do about it, you know what I mean? Like, I can't do anything. And I think maybe that's why I'm mad. I don't know, like, usually when you're sick, eventually, a few days later, you're gonna, like, start at least getting better. But it's, like, constant. Had some Pedialyte, had some more water. I wanted to make sure he had Pedialyte, even though he doesn't like the taste of the one that he got. Because I know that water alone isn't going to be enough right now. And he managed to eat a chicken nugget and a french fry. Uh, some crackers and like that's it and I got him to eat some more crackers and take a bit more water and then he thought maybe taking this mucinex stuff would be a good idea because he felt like his chest was heavy or whatever so he did that and he went to go lay down and of course uh, then you know it started working so he had to get up and you know like cough his lungs out and get the mucus out which I was hoping at that point he would be feeling a bit better. That was my hope. At this point, he hasn't eaten normally in probably the entire week. Um, I think after day, by day three, I think, he was not capable of keeping things down pro properly and like was throwing up and stuff. I think it was day three, it was day three or four. I don't know. He did test positive for COVID. 19. I don't know. I'm just angry. I'm just angry because I just want it to be done. Like, I can't take this anymore. And, like, I know he can't take this anymore. And it's not like I can just give him a medicine and it makes it better because nothing makes it better. Like, he got prescribed a pain medicine that we went and got that night. And I was like, well, maybe that's good. Maybe that will help him and then he'll be better and, like, he'll start to recover. And, like, no. Nope. He decided that was what made him nauseous, which it probably was because he doesn't have any freaking food in his stomach, which he can't get himself to eat because then he starts feeling like he's going to throw up. And I don't know what to do. Like, it's a lose, 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 lose situation and it's just making me mad. I guess I'm just irrationally angry. Like, and I don't know. Am I angry at him? Like, I don't know. Maybe. It feels like if I could just get him to, like, drink it it'd be better but like he did though he did and he couldn't drink anymore but like he's not drinking a lot of fluids when he can't drink anymore and he can't bring himself to drink anything or eat much and like we're both trying and I can't I don't know what to do I can't make him feel better he can't do anything to make himself feel better and I'm just mad I'm just mad I'm just mad just mad and like we have to assume I'm assuming that I have it I might be mostly asymptomatic all I've had so far is feeling lethargic was battling a minor minor sore throat to the point that I wouldn't even call it a sore throat like a trying to be sore throat sore throat then sometimes my lungs hurt and that's about it and I've had a little bit of a cough but like not much at all so, you know, thank God if that's, if that's all it is for me, praise God. But for him, it's like, it's almost like it's not even like, it's almost like the lung part is secondary for him. 
and like it's dangerous and I don't know what to do and I'm just angry because it's supposed to go away it's been like it's day eight now it should have at least improved he was seeing better doing better um for a little bit during the day time and then all of a sudden now it's like he doesn't even get that much better for maybe an hour or two where he'll like talk to you and like use his phone or whatever but the majority of the day it's him moaning and groaning and whining in his chair trying not to die and I don't know what to do about it I don't know I don't know what to do about it it's really annoying I don't know what to do about it so then today um I'm trying to help him I'm just trying I don't know what to do I'm trying and like at this point like I can't engage every time he makes a noise because I am getting really worn out and like my sensory threshold is like I'm done like I can't listen to this anymore our house is so freaking small we are in each other's space all the freaking time like we both had to use the bathroom today at the same time it wasn't so great having to try to figure out who goes first when we're both not feeling like 100 percent and like so like he can't get away from any noise I make so I can't make noise and then he's making noise and I just want to throw everyone out and I just want this to stop and that's so selfish you know what I mean like I just can't handle the noises I can't handle him being sick and like it's supposed to be gone by now and like what's worse is like like I can't I can't make those kinds of decisions dude like he was getting irritated at me because I was, like, I was, like, like, I'd be asking him, like, what he needs, like, I can't get in his body and tell what he freaking needs, and, like, I don't know, I'm just mad, I'm just mad, and I don't know what to do, and so, yeah, then he's all of a sudden, out of nowhere, like, babe, check my heart, how the frick do I check someone's heart, I don't even know, I took anatomy and physiology where we one day had to know how to use a stethoscope, which, I don't own which never really worked properly for me because for some reason I can't decipher where the freaking pulse is coming from nor where to put it for the pulse and I was trying to figure it out then he was all like oh never mind so then I'm like okay maybe he's better like maybe he decided it's not so bad and then all of a sudden he's like call 911 and I'm like I'm sorry what the frick because one oh my god and two like we've already gone to the freaking emergency room which I feel stupid for doing we could have gone to urgent care because we went early enough last time to go to go and get an IV done for probably not a gajillion dollars like it's gonna be so I don't know we don't have any freaking insurance we live in America um and you know honestly I I know that a lot of people are for free health care and a lot of people aren't we're like one of the only countries that doesn't do free health care and at this point me saying I can't freaking call an ambulance are you kidding me Like, not only, one, I'm a little scared because I don't want to, like, waste resources, sure. But two, I don't know how we're going to afford the first emergency room visit, let alone this one, let alone an ambulance ride. So I took him in. I called an urgent care, asked them if they could do it, and they are like, there won't be enough time before they close. And also, if we were that concerned about it tonight, then he needs to go in right now to an ER. So now he's in the ER, which, by the way, since he has COVID, I'm not allowed to go with him. Even though, for everyone else, they get one person with them. So I don't get anyone. I don't get to go. I'm his wife. I don't get to go. I just get to figure out whatever he feels like texting me, what is going on. And I just need to know... I don't know, and I'm just like, at this point, like, can you just fix him? Like, how do you get someone fix him? I don't make these decisions. I don't do this kind of thing. And, like, this is, like, this is the autistic part. I don't make these decisions. I don't know how to. I don't know how to. I don't know how to tell, like, when, like, we have to go to, when we have to go, and if I'm being, like, negligent and not taking my husband, or if he's just, like, feeling overwhelmed at the moment. Like, I should probably talk to my family, but I don't know how to do that. And that's so stupid, right? I should know how to do that. Um, I should know how to do that. But I don't know. And I'm sure if they see this, they'd be like, oh, Stephanie, why didn't you tell me? I don't know. I don't know because I can't deal with someone else right now. I can't deal with it. I can't deal with it. And I don't know what to do. 
Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's what I was going to tell you. My dog. Our dog. Um, <laughs> like, the only thing I can go to because my husband's, like, sick and I don't know what to do. And, like, the normal stuff that, like, oh, he'll get through. Or, like, oh, here's some crackers and then we'll build up to something else. There is no building up to anything else. Anyway, so then she's over there, like, peeing blood. And we suspect she has a UTI. How to take her into the vet? That wasn't cheap, but at least it's gonna be a lot less expensive than taking care of like traditional healthcare for this stuff right now. Um, so thankfully she's doing a lot better. She's, I'm pretty sure she'll be fine as long as I just like keep doing what they said to do, and I think she'll be fine. <sighs> I just, I don't know what to do. Um, and I don't have, I, I don't freaking care. I just want everyone to leave me alone. And I say that, but I want, like, I want comfort. But I just want everyone to shut up. Because I can't figure out how you want me to answer you and what you want me to say. And yes, God bless. I don't know. I got told that I wasn't allowed to go back with him, um, even though he couldn't even freaking talk enough to answer questions. <laughs> I don't know what to do. And I just want him to be better. And, like, part of me hopes he will stay overnight because then they'll make him get better, right? Like, that way, that way, <laughs> that way they'll make him get better and they know what to do because I don't know what to do. <laughs> And, like, maybe, I don't know, I think it's because I'm autistic. Maybe it's just because I'm stupid. I don't know. Maybe everybody doesn't know what to do and they just pretend that they do. I don't know. I just... <sighs> so they told me I couldn't go back in with him. And then they said, either go to your car or go home. That, um, is a scene that people use as a meme... And he says, why are we still here just to suffer? Like, literally, that's what I feel like right now. And I'm sure my husband feels that, like, a million times worse than me. It is 10.54. I just got a call, and I thought he was probably gonna tell me to come pick him up, or that, you know, things were wrapping up or whatever. Because last time they said his lungs look good. So, like, that wasn't that big of a, you know, it wasn't that bad, right? Um... He just called me and said that it's not looking as good this time. That his chest doesn't look good this time. Um, that he's on oxygen right now. They're waiting on blood work. And there's talk of moving, transferring him. Which I don't know what that means. I don't know if I transfer him or they transfer him. So I don't know what's about to happen I guess he called his family and let them know. I don't know, I just- I guess I expected them to bring his fluids and stuff back to where it needed to be and figure out a way for him to keep down food or something. I didn't think, like, his lungs would be bad. Hello! Welcome once again to the unflattering car video. My husband has been moved hospitals, which kind of sucks because further out which also means more traffic so that part's not real exciting but it does mean that they're more capable of caring for him properly than the hospital that I took him to the ER apparently he said that the hospital he was taken to they don't do their ER anymore so when they took him in from the transfer he said it was really like creepy because they were passing through like empty hall like an empty space place with all these empty beds and he said it was just weird he asked me to bring him some stuff so that's what I'm doing now I just let my family know just all everybody we have a group text that I usually ignore because it's usually just like random conversation that doesn't necessarily involve me and I don't like I don't know I don't like <laughs> I don't like having to like be constantly available via text and stuff um, Justin's like that too. He was getting really frustrated because everyone was trying to be sweet and, you know, check on him and stuff. But it was getting annoying because his phone just kept on going off. But that was when he was home. I don't know how he feels right now. 
as you might be able to tell, I'm feeling a lot better than last night, uh, emotions wise. I hope I can stay this way. I think like knowing that he's okay and that he's doing better and that they know what to do. Like, I think that's really helped me. Um, and to know like at this point, like his family has been really helpful too. And then some people have, have checked on me and then some of my patrons, um, I told them about, you know, what's been going on as well as, uh, my channel members already. And, you know, they reached out and just, just thank you guys. It means a lot to know that there are people out there who care. Um, so thank you for that. I'm going to try to like not be so emotional. We're going to be okay. We're going to make it through. Right? So I just dropped off Justin's stuff and I wanted to record this real quick before I forgot. Thank you to the lady at the front named Megan. She asked me if it was okay to put this on or if I needed it on my bag for sensory issues because she saw me finger flicking. So that was just really sweet. Um, I think that's like the, <laughs> I know this sounds so stupid, but like for someone to immediately see me and be like, okay, yeah, here's what you need to do. And like to, to like that quickly know that I might have issues like that. Um, and to like be mindful of that. Like, I don't know. It was just really nice. It was really nice of someone to be that considerate. I might just be really hyper emotional right now. I'm sorry guys, but like, thank you to Megan. I, d I doubt you'll ever see this, but if you ever do, thank you so much. And, um, I don't know, just awesome, awesome. <laughs> and she said she understands. <laughs> so, I don't know, it was just, I don't know, for someone to, just from this, you know? I guess this is kind of a weird thing to see, but, um, I don't know, I just meant a lot. Thankfully, the these bracelets don't really bother me, unless if they're on too long. But she was gonna, like, put it on my uh, purse strap if, if it bothered me, and... It was just really nice and so I wanted to say that. I wore double masks but whoo that does a lot for my lungs trying to power, power air through there. Because <clears throat> normally I wear my black mask but last night at the other hospital they said you could wear your mask but that you had to wear their mask under it and since it's very likely that in some way I'm either carrying or have had or have COVID I just figured it would just be safer for everyone <laughs> if I double masked because I don't really, I'm not like, the only places I've gone are drive throughs and I've been wearing my mask in the drive through too because that way they shouldn't have, you know, a problem making sure I don't touch them even though they have gloves on and stuff, but just try not to touch them when receiving my stuff and then the only other place I've been is to take him to the hospital and then um, this hospital here. So. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure, because, you know, I don't want to spread it to anybody, obviously, if I am still, like, carrying it or whatever. But I've been feeling lethargic and, like, sleeping for way too long for quite a while, so either I'm just... <laughs> I just got issues, or I've been dealing with it for a little bit. I don't know. Oh, yeah, to all the people who are like, oh, my God, masks don't, like, make it harder for you. Like, shut up. It does. Not that maybe your oxygen levels are going down or whatever, but it is harder to breathe. And when you're already having difficulty breathing, whew, trying to breathe through like thick stuff is really freaking hard. I feel like that should be obvious. I don't know why everyone's being a-holes about masks, like honestly. Um, if someone's not wearing a mask, like as someone who has their husband in the hospital right now, as someone who may or may not have it, which let's just be honest, I probably do. I... I don't understand why people are being a-holes about masks. If someone doesn't have a mask, assume they have an underlying medical condition and cannot wear it. They might be a-holes, sure, they might be, but you are not entitled to their medical information. And that's what really ticks me off, is there's these people out here who are getting like ran over by everyone, and even when they do have medical conditions, that they cannot be wearing that mask. The CDC says they should not be wearing that mask. Everyone online is like, oh my gosh, like you're a horrible person. You're putting everyone at risk. No, no. So let's stop being a-holes to each other. Wear a mask if you can, please, that'd be great. But do not go after people for not wearing masks. You do not know their personal information and you are not entitled to it. Just give them the benefit of the doubt spread some kindness. So basically Justin's just been in the hospital this whole time. They had kind of tried to take him off oxygen early and then 
they uh, put him back on because he wasn't ready for that. But then they kind of waited for a while before they tried again. And he says it sounded kind of like they were supposed to keep trying. I don't know. Either way, um, he was told yesterday that no promises, but it was possible that he could go home today. Maybe. So I'm assuming either today or tomorrow, if today's a maybe. I'm really glad he'll be coming home. He looks so much better, sounds so much better. Uh, you would not believe like the, the state of just plain misery that he was in when I was taking care of him. So I, at this point, I have posted about this on my main channel via a community tab post. So a lot of you were... First of all, thank you. Uh, so many of you saying that you um, were wishing us well, that he would get better, um, prayers, thoughts, vibes, all the things. Um, and I really, really appreciate that and he appreciates that. I haven't heard anything from him today, as in whether they told him anything new. And I am driving to the town over to get uh, tested for COVID. My friend, Stephanie from Autism Mom Plans, had told me of a place where they were doing like the saliva test but their first opening isn't until Thursday and I didn't ask at that point if if, if that was a saliva test or just the swab or whatever um, and then a lot of places around me are either they're the quick turnaround so I'd have to pay for it because I don't have insurance or they're just really, really booked. So I'm going to the same place that actually swabbed Justin the time that he got tested and his test results finally came back for us to know that he did have it. So that's where I'm going. They said under the CARES Act that both the swab and the antibody test should be free. I hope they are right. And that makes me also wonder about some of these other places that were like, well, for the visit, it's going to cost you X, Y, and Z because that doesn't sound right if it falls under the CARE Act or CARES Act. I don't know. They're very nice. She's just very nice. <laughs> and, oh my god, I'm such a baby. Ugh, I don't know how to explain. Eh. Some people are so crazy if they think it's just a tickle. Like, what the frick is wrong with you? It burns. Eh. It burns. I don't like it. I don't like it. I just don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. So I went in to just make sure whether I had it or not. And I'm not happy right now. Ew. 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 Your nasal pharynx is not meant to be touched. It is not meant to be touched. I don't like it. I don't like it. It hurts. It's like, it's weird though. It's not like a traditional pain. I don't like it. It's over, it's over, it's over, it's over. The, they make jokes about it feeling like it touches your brain, but I don't feel like that. It just feels like ah, they were touching parts of your inside your face that are not supposed to touch. They're not supposed to touch that. And they did. They, it stings. It stung. I started crying like a baby. Huh? Uh, but like I did I couldn't handle the second one the first one I made it through without backing my head up too much and then I tried really hard to not back my head up for the second one but she had to keep on pushing she kept on pushing into my face I told her I had autism so at least at least she can understand my reactions hopefully I'm sure people react poorly in general just very sweet person very kind it just sucked really bad and I just wanted to stop I wanted to stop feeling it I want to stop feeling it I want to stop feeling it <laughs> I already have a problem with like feeling like stuff is still like touching 
um, when it's not, like when I felt something unpleasant, like I can still feel it later if it's unpleasant or unexpected, but I didn't hit anybody and oh, I hit myself a little bit in the head, but that's it. And I didn't hurt myself, so that's good. And then I just squeezed my head and made noises. Ew, that's what it feels like. It feels like when when the water, ew. On vacation with Justin, when we went to Corpus Christi, all of a sudden something happened and the waves came over us. I had salt water um, in my face, like in everything. I couldn't breathe. I thought I was drowning, it was so bad. It like sat too, because I couldn't breathe. Um, and then all of a sudden I felt the water drain out the back of my throat and everything burned and that's what that feels like. So I must have gotten salt water in my nasopharynx when that happened because it freaking hurts. Anyway, so it feels like I'm having a little bit of drainage from being poked. I don't want to sneeze. That's what it feels like. Okay. Ow. So you know when like you're, like you're really dry? in your nasal passages and you have that feeling like it's almost like like this to sneeze but you feel like you might bleed from your sneeze because of how it feels that's what it feels like if you can relate to that at all <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense so I thought I had managed to not get myself hurt uh, during <laughs> the um, the um visit to our lovely naso fur naso pharyngeal visit of doom i was wrong so apparently i accidentally scratched myself up pretty bad <laughs> it hurt okay i thought i did pretty good because i squeezed my head really hard or anything but like i only hit it a few times but I don't remember what I was doing other than trying to not freak out and whining and bringing my head back. So I must have been digging my nails into my arms too. Oops. So today I'm supposed to pick up Justin. It is 2.30ish, nearing 3 o'clock. And we don't have any time like specifically when I should be there to pick him up. But his, um, <laughs> he's very impatient. And so this is the second time, I haven't called today, but I called yesterday, last night, about information. They said they'll do their best to tell me tomorrow, which is today. And then he was like, ask them. So I called them again, and they were like, okay, we know, you know, like, we know it's it's hard for him to be here. We're trying our best to get him out of there. Uh, but we have to wait on the doctor, and so we don't have a time frame. So it's just kind of funny, because his nurse was like, we know. <laughs> like, we know we're trying to get him out, but... It's, it's going to take for the doctor to, like, write the stuff up and stuff like that. So, that is what we're doing now, is waiting. And I am really tired and lethargic today, like, more so than yesterday. I don't know if my body is just responding to having a swab stuck up into its face or something. <laughs> I don't know. Good morning. That's my fan. Because I am in the office recording area the whatever you want to call it um we have the bunk bed on top of my recording space that a lot of people wonder if it's a small room uh because um so justin's home so yay justin's home uh but he has what is called walking pneumonia or community acquired pneumonia in addition to, you know, dealing with the remnants of COVID and all that jazz, and he has been told to uh, quarantine or isolate while at home. And uh, I just woke up to a call telling me that my Rona test came back positive, of which I already kind of thought that would happen because I literally was caring for him for an entire week while he was completely and utterly miserable and practically dying. So I really didn't think I could have not had it. Just been dealing with occasionally achy lungs, some coughing, and uh, difficulty catching my breath. I think that's been the most annoying part. And sometimes I just feel really crappy and lethargic, but... Uh, yeah, I thought I would update you. I 
told Justin that this is the, um, the, what, the Big Rona adventure vlog or something like that. <laughs> but, so, pros for our house being so small is that I can sit up here on this bunk bed and just casually talk to Justin, who's in our bed <laughs> in the next room over, because, um... That's how small our house is. So we were just talking this morning. I thought that was kind of fun. Not like it's to be with Justin because I'm not going to bring her all the way up here. So um, he gets most of the Nala cuddles at night. Like I should be fine 10 days after onset of symptoms. The problem is I haven't kept track. And I need to be three days out from having had a fever. The only problem i'm a little worried about is that i didn't feel so great a couple nights ago i think it was where it felt like i had a really mild case of like the shivers and stuff so i didn't like test myself with the temperature thermometer thing or whatever so i don't know i'm probably i'll probably be fine but i mean i've been wearing a mask obviously um i've really limited my contact around people I mean, I am also introverted, so I've been just kind of chilling inside my house anyway. So it's not like I've been, like, all around a bunch of people or anything. Um, I still don't have an outside job other than, you know, doing stuff online. So, yeah, it's not like I've been all around people and I haven't had anyone over or gone anywhere with people because I suspected that I would have it, so. Friday. I ended the day having to take NyQuil to make it through the night and slept most of the day. Today, I, well, I woke up at four in the morning, took another NyQuil, but I'm only, I'm only taking one pill when you can take two because I don't want to like overload my body. Um, <laughs> so fun story, I was feeling not well and you know that icky feeling that you feel like all in your skin and your body when like you're sick or having a fever so I took my temperature and I had a hundred degree fever so that's fun so I anticipate we will be doing NyQuil again tonight my nose stuff has cleared up more so than yesterday so that's encouraging but I shouldn't be <laughs> I should not need to breathe like this it's really stupid so that's how this is going. I figured I would record a clip because I literally can't like do anything. And my husband is asking me if I'm talking to someone on the toilet because I'm vlogging in the bathroom. So, thanks babe. Appreciate it. Today has not been fun. I feel a lot better right now, but basically I had to take a two-part shower. Um, because I couldn't breathe <laughs> in middle of my shower. Um, so I had to literally take, take a break. That was an experience that I don't think I've ever had before. Very unpleasant, honestly. Um, I had quite the time catching my breath. Supposedly, I don't know, I'm wondering now if our thermometer works properly. Because it said that I had a 100.5 fever today, and yesterday I had a 100.3, which yesterday makes sense because I felt feverish. But today didn't really make sense. I mean, I felt a little warm, but like, I don't know. I'm glad I decided to do an online class because I would not be allowed on campus because I'm not technically allowed around people right now. So that would be kind of awkward. Welcome to day whatever it is of the big Rona adventure vlog of stupid. Um, <laughs> today's not as bad <coughs> as yesterday. Still can't, like still running out of breath going from room to room and stuff, but it's not as bad. Justin has interviews, so that's good, I guess. Well, he was furloughed in March and laid off April, March, April, May, yeah, April, <laughs> one of the months. Really tired of not being able to breathe, but feeling a lot better in general, so that's good. My breathing has been about the same, if not worse. 
I had to take my inhaler yesterday. I'm debating doing it today. Um, it is nighttime. <clears throat> I'm coughing to the point of like it's it's initiating like the whole gag reflex and like throw up mechanism of your body. I lost sense of smell or at least noticed that I did two days ago and I thought I was getting it back a little bit because I could faintly smell something that was pretty strong but like super faintly like tiny notes of it but really I'm not smelling really anything. Um, I think it is a little better, like, a tiny bit better because it affects how you taste things. Um, and today, I think I got a little more flavor from stuff, and I think it's because I got a little bit more smell back. But, um, I don't know why I'm having these symptoms now instead of earlier on. <coughs> Especially as I was already having fatigue and lung pain symptoms well before this. This is really taking me off, to be honest with you. Um, I just want to be able to focus on my YouTube and my school and just find a freaking job. And I can't even do anything because I about die walking from, from one room to the other. It's just insane. And I really don't like it, but I th thankfully Justin is doing way, way better. So there's that. Okay, so I figured it's probably about time to wrap up the Big Rona adventure vlog or whatever. I think the last clip that I made was the one in the car when I was talking about how I felt like I was dying when I was trying to breathe. And then the next day, I think, Justin took me on a little walk that happened to have steep uphill climbing involved in which i almost coughed out a lung it legit felt like that it also felt like it was about to trigger a panic attack it was a very unpleasant experience how to the ever um we saw the very pretty lake it wasn't far it was just kind of steep at at my um current abilities basically which he doesn't think so but it's okay after that i think the next day we took a little walk down our road and stuff like that but since around that time my lungs have seemed to clear up more i don't have like the traditional runny nose and um super bad cough or anything like that um now i still have problems with my lung capacity but i don't feel like i'm dying because of it i did kind of feel that way before and it hurt to breathe doesn't hurt to breathe right now. I'm hoping it stays that way and just continues to get better. Um, Justin is in the process of interviews for jobs and stuff, so he's doing a lot better. And so I feel like it's probably the appropriate time to go ahead and close out this vlog and this um, rather unpleasant journey that I'm just glad I didn't have to end up in the hospital for because there was a point we were starting to wonder just because of how um, my breathing was, but we're good now. All good. Anyway, thank you for coming along with with us, with me mostly, on our horrifying adventure. <laughs> I hope that you don't have to experience this, and um, stay safe. Goodbye.